Hello, uh, my name is uh, Mary O'Neill and I'm going to be doing the board review for neurology today. I have no disclosures. So the first question is a 47 year old a hiker who has pain in his left buttock that radiates uh, down his left leg. The pain is not affected by position or motion. She also says that her left foot tingles as do parts of her uh, uh, leg and thigh, left fingers and left anterior portion of her chest. A month ago, a physician treated her for right Bell's palsy and um, arthritis. So question number one, which of the following would be the most helpful in establishing a, a diagnosis? A, an uh, EMG, nerve conduction study. B, a somatosensory evoked uh, res response. C, an MRI of the spine and spinal cord. D, a lumbar puncture. Or E, a lumbar spine x-ray. The answer is D. So this lady obviously has Lyme disease, which can present with cranial neuropathies. Typically, uh, seventh nerve palsy is uh, very common and occurs in up to 10% of uh, untreated patients. And it also causes an inflammatory polyradiculopathy, which can mimic a mechanical radiculopathy, such as from a disc herniation. So a, a lumbar puncture would rule out other inflammatory infectious uh, uh, disorders and would be uh, classically uh, showed a lim with lymphocytic uh, pleocytosis. An EMG nerve conduction study might be abnormal but wouldn't help uh, be definitive in uh, making the diagnosis. And an MRI would be abnormal, if, particularly if you did it with gadolinium, but again, would be uh, not specific. And an X-ray of the spine would not be helpful at all. Question two, a 78 year old uh, woman uh, who's a normal tensive suddenly uh, cannot see to the left and knows that her left hand is tingling. Two years previously, she had a stroke which left her uh, right uh, side weak. And the family report that during the past years she'd been a bit unreliable in uh, daily responsibilities and forgets people's names. A CT scan shows a recent well-circumscribed homogeneous right parietal temporal hemorrhage, as well as an old uh, slit-like cavity in the left medial frontal lobe under the cortex, ventricular dilatation and some uh, uh, cortical sulci widening or atrophy. So the most likely diagnosis is A, hemorrhage into a brain tumor, B, a cerebral amyloid angiopathy. C, embolization of cardiac origin with hemorrhagic infarction. D, multiple cerebral aneurysms. Or E, recurrent head trauma. The answer is B, cerebral amyloid angiopathy. So here's a picture of her uh, CT scan where you can see the uh, well-circumscribed hemorrhage. And in the left frontal lobe, uh, there's uh, an area of uh, old slit-like hemorrhage. So her prior uh, stroke uh, that resulted in right-sided weakness is explained by the left frontal lobe lesion. And this slit-like cavity is often seen as a residual finding after a hemorrhage. So this is a lady who's had two uh, unprovoked hemorrhages uh, in a lobar location um, with possible dementia given the family history. And so uh, this is most consistent with uh, cerebral angi amyloid uh, angiopathy, uh, which of which uh, intracranial hemorrhage is, the most is a very common recognized complication. Question three, <clears throat> after skiing, a 27 year old woman develops pain in the mastoid region that radiates to the left occiput and neck. The next day she becomes dizzy, staggered, and felt pain in her forehead and eye. On physical exam, she has a normal blood pressure, but she has some abnormal neurologic findings, including decreased pin perception on the left side of the face and right trunk. She has a left Horner syndrome, 
rotatory nystagmus, weakness of the left palate and pharynx, and clumsiness in, uh, in coordination of the left limbs. So the most likely diagnosis is A, embolus to the basilar artery with pontine infarction, B, pontine hemorrhage, C, dissection of the left vertebral artery, D, dissection of the left internal carotid artery, or E, atherosclerotic occlusion of the internal carotid artery. The answer is C, dissection of the left vertebral artery. So uh, vertebral artery dissection commonly presents with ipsilateral, occipital, or neck pain, and they often, patients often point to the exact location of the uh, dissection. Um, and in this case, she had a lateral medullary stroke, or the eponym is the Wall Wallenberg syndrome, which is a medullary stroke, which is shown in the DWI image up here, uh, uh, involving the lateral medulla, which causes cross-sensory uh, findings, cerebellar findings, uh, ipsilateral uh, corners, um, weakness of uh, the pharynx and larynx related to cranial neuropathy, leading to uh, causing dysphagia, dysarthria, and vertigo. So question four, a 64-year-old man has progressive spasticity of gait, impotence, and urinary frequency. He has occasional headaches at the vertex. Physical exam shows increased tone in both lower extremities, three plus patellar and ankle reflexes, and bilateral extensor plantar reflexes. Which of the following is the next best step? Uh, in taking in his care. One, A, sending him to physical therapy. B, uh, magnetic resonance imaging of the cervical spine. C, an EMG nerve conduction study. D, CT scan of the lumbar spine. Or E, cerebral angiogram. The answer is B. An MRI of the neck is the test of choice to assess this gentleman because he has a cervical myelopathy. Um, cervical cord compression, uh, as shown in this M uh, sagittal MRI, uh, can cause progressive spasticity, sexual dysfunction, as, and spastic uh, bladder. Um, the most common uh, etiology for uh, this disorder in the elderly is cervical spondylosis. And signs of uh, cervical canal narrowing can, can be seen on plain films, CT, MRI, or CT myelogram, but uh, an MRI is the best test here. An EMG neuroconduction study may not, is rarely useful, um, but as, as it only looks at uh, root problems or uh, peripheral nerve pathology. So question five, an 80 year old woman with mitral valve disease and chronic atrial fibrillation suddenly becomes confused during a family dinner. She's um, awake, alert, and her motor function seems to be intact. Um, she's moving everything symmetrically. She speaks in long sentences unconnected to the events of the evening or the questions asked of her. She uses many word substitutions and nonsense words. She appears unable to understand questions put to her by her family members. The most likely diagnosis is A, complex partial seizure, B, transient global amnesia, C, a dominant hemisphere stroke, D, non-dominant hemispheric stroke, or E, delirium. The answer is C. This is a dominant hemispheric stroke. She has risk factors with atrial fibrillation and uh, has sudden onset of deficits characteristic of uh, an, a stroke. Her um, language is consistent with fluent speech with word substitutions, which we call paraphasia, and nonsense words, neologisms. 
she has impaired comprehension. And this is sort of a very classic uh, description for Wernicke's aphasia it vocalizes to the left hemisphere uh, involving the posterior uh, temporal lobe, which is Wernicke's area. There are no motor deficits because uh, the inferior portion of the middle cerebral artery uh, does, does not supply the frontal lobe or uh, motor cortex. Um, sometimes there may be a visual field uh, deficit associated with this uh, involving the optic radiations. Um, and uh, so, but that can be very difficult uh, to uh, elicit if someone has uh, a significant aphasia. 95% uh, of right-handed people will uh, have a dominance of the left uh, hemisphere in, uh, uh, for language. Question six, a 48 year old man comes to his physician complaining of right leg pain and numbness for the past three weeks. Pain is in the upper lateral thigh. It's burning and stinging in quality. The pain radiates to the groin and down to the knee. He has a past medical history of obesity and has not seen a doctor for many years. On examination, he's obese, otherwise well appearing. Strength is full, uh, bilaterally. There's decreased sensation in his right lateral thigh to temperature and pinprick. Uh, there's also a decreased sensation to pinprick and uh, temperature and vibration bilaterally in a stocking distribution to the mid calves uh, on both sides. Reflexes are notable for one plus knee jerks, no ankle jerks, and uh, bilateral flexor plantar uh, responses. So which is the next uh, best diagnostic uh, test to obtain? A, a hemoglobin A1C, B, a vitamin B12 level, <coughs> C, an EMG nerve conduction study, D, an MRI of the lumbar spine, or E, a CT scan of the pelvis? The answer is A. So this uh, gentleman has what we would call uh, myalgia parasthetica. Um, and um, this is really a neuropathy that would affect the uh, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. A uh, nerve is often compressed by tight clothing. Um, it can also be uh, associated uh, with weight, loss, uh, weight gain, we have compression at the groin. Also significant weight loss can cause this uh, uh, condition, presumably by decreasing the fat padding around the nerve. The diagnosis is a clinical uh, uh, one by finding this typical sensory loss as demonstrated here, which respects the midline um, with normal motor function. Um, it is very common in patients with diabetes. And in this patient, he has a peripheral neuropathy as well, uh, likely related to undiagnosed uh, diabetes. A B12 uh, deficiency causes a myelopathy as, um, as well as a neuropathy and it would not present uh, as in this case. Okay, question seven. 10 days ago, a 22 year old man had an inoculation of tetanus toxoid in his right arm after removal of a splinter. He now has uh, severe pain in his right shoulder and arm, as well as paresthesias in his right hand. On physical exam, uh, he has a severe weakness of muscles around the right shoulder girdle and absence of a right biceps reflex. Passive movement of the shoulder is normal. Sensory exam is normal and other reflexes in the arms and the legs are normal. The most likely diagnosis is A, a brachial neuritis, B, a herniated C7 disc, C, epidural cervical spinal abscess, D, a cervical spine tumor, or E, a rotator cuff injury. The answer is A, brachial neuritis. This is called a Parsons-Turner syndrome is characterized by inflammation of the brachial plexus, typically coming on after uh, 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 immunization. Uh, it presents with severe shoulder pain 
And then after the pain starts to improve, there's generally weakness, particularly uh, in the upper plexus, that is deltoid and periscapular muscles. It's, it can occur in an idiopathic fashion, but um, it also can be autoimmune and triggered by immunization as in this case. Typically there's a good recovery, treatment is supportive. Uh, there's no a role for uh, steroids or other immunosuppression. A C7 disc would not uh, cause weakness, uh, weakness in the uh, distribution as in this case. And it's, uh, it would cause a weakness in the triceps and wrist extensors, but it wouldn't cause a drop to um, biceps reflex or, or proximal shoulder weakness. Question eight. 60 year old man with a long history of back pain recently began feeling weakness and tingling in his legs when he walks more than half a block. The symptoms disappear when he sits. He has no symptoms when he does bicycling like exercises supine on his bed even after 30 minutes. Except for an absent left ankle jerk, his neurologic exam is normal. <clears throat> Foot and femoral pulses are also normal. The most likely diagnosis is A, aortic atherosclerosis with claudication, B, a polyneuropathy, C, a disc herniation at L5, D, lumbar spinal stenosis, or E, a cervical spondylitic myelopathy. The answer is D. So this is a great history for what we call neurogenic claudication. So uh, lumbar stenosis can be asymptomatic, um, but is often associated with low back pain and causes signs and symptoms of focal nerve root uh, compression, or can give rise in this case to neurogenic claudication which is pain and discomfort in the low back, buttock and legs that occurs only after walking and is relieved with sitting. Uh, relief of the symptoms when you're flexed is typical, which is why it's easier to walk up a hill rather than downhill and it forms the basis of, of what we described as the bicycle test. Um, so because you could, should be able to uh, perform uh, well with uh, the spine flexed, and have more difficulty with being in the um, upright or erect position. Uh, patient with vascular claudication would uh, be, would, this would not be different in a patient with vascular claudication. And again, he had normal uh, vascular pulses. So question nine, <clears throat> a previously healthy man is found unconscious in his apartment and there's no evidence of trauma. On examination, he is a responsive to voice and painful stimulus, but there's no evidence of any meningeal irritation. Pupils are three millimeters and unreactive. There is no inducible eye movements by the ocular cephalix or Dahl's maneuver, or even with uh, irrigation of the tympanic membrane with ice water. Blood pressure is 90 over 70 pulse rate is 54, and respiratory function is depressed. The most likely diagnosis is A, a sedative drug overdose, B, subarachnoid hemorrhage, C, intracranial mass, D, a brain stem stroke, or E, narcotic overdose. The answer is E, narcotic overdose. So the clues are that he has small pupils and a depressed respiratory rate. So a patient with impaired brainstem uh, function um, it certainly can happen after a temporary drug overdose. Uh, both sedative and narcotic overdose can lead to absent ocular uh, cephalic and ocular vestibular reflexes. The pupils wouldn't be small though in a sedative drug overdose. Question 10, a 35 year old woman had a, a renal transplant four years ago uh, for renal failure. 
uh, due to membranous glomerulonephritis. She's hospitalized because of progressive left-sided weakness and dysarthria. She has been treated with prednisone and cyclosporin. A test for HIV is negative. MRI of her uh, brain shows uh, in the right uh, frontal lobe a focal abnormal uh, signal that spares the cortical gray matter as shown here. There is minimal mass effect and no enhancement of this uh, lesion. There's also similar small lesions throughout the white matter. So the most likely diagnosis is A, multiple sclerosis, B, a glioma, C, an embolic stroke, D, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, E, primary central nervous system lymphoma. The answer is D, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. Uh, patient is immunosuppressed, uh, leaving her uh, very vulnerable to activation of the JC virus. Um, this disease is usually associated with AIDS, but also can see, be seen in other patients with immunocompromise. Uh, um, the virus causes destruction of the CNS white matter uh, by infection of the oligodendrocytes. Uh, with acute lesions of multiple sclerosis, uh, the glio uh, glioma and the lymphoma, there would often be enhancement uh, due to breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. Additionally, MS would require two separate uh, episodes of demyelination in time and space, and this patient wouldn't be at any higher risk for MS than anybody else. A stroke would affect the gray matter uh, as well as the white matter would not present in this fashion. So question 11, the diagnosis can be best established by A, measuring beta-2 microglobulin in the CSF, B, an uh, EEG, C, arteriography, D, MRI imaging, or E, uh, brain biopsy. So, uh, the so the answer is E, brain biopsy. Uh, diagnosis of PML can be made by uh, CSF PCR, which is uh, highly specific, up to 92, 92 to 99%, and sensitive, 74 to 93%, uh, for detection of the JC virus in patients with PML. Uh, the brain biopsy also is quite sensitive, up to 92%, uh, but very and very specific, up to 100%, showing viral uh, inclusions. Question 12, a 60 year old businessman suddenly becomes confused at a meeting. He has no perceivable uh, motor impairment and recognizes his colleagues. He continually asks the same question over and over again about the subject matter under consideration at the meeting. One week later, the patient's normal but unable to remember the events of the meeting at all. So the most likely diagnosis is A, a hysterical fugue state, B, a pulmonary embolus, C, a stroke syndrome, D, transient global amnesia, or E, a complex partial seizure. The answer is D. Transient global amnesia, or TGA, is characterized by less than 24 hours inability to make new memory. They have anti-grade amnesia, cannot, has, cannot be attributed to other causes such as a stroke or seizure. They have normal level of awareness and otherwise normal cognitive functioning during the uh, uh, event. Uh, characteristically affects uh, middle-aged or elderly people. Um, they t have a very classic presentation as it, in this case, where they repeat over and over again, the same question. The underlying cause is not clear, but it's thought to be related to reversible dysfunction of the hippocampus, probably due to uh, ischemia or uh, uh, excitotoxicity. Question 13. 
Question 13. Four years after having a lumpectomy and radiation treatment for breast carcinoma, a 45-year-old woman uh, develops pain and weakness of her left leg that spreads over a week uh, to involve her right leg. She has low back pain in the mid-thorax and a circumferential band-like uh, sensation. In the past day, she's become incontinent of urine after brief urgency and genitalia are numb. She weighs 160 kilos. Reflexes are three plus with a unsustained uh, ankle and knee clonus. Toes are extensor and the legs occasionally jerk in the flexed position. So the most likely diagnosis is A, intramedullary metastasis, B, an epidural metastasis, C, carcinomatous meningitis, D, metastasis to the sagittal sinus, or E, radiation necrosis of the spinal cord. The answer is B, epidural metastasis. So she has core compression in the thoracic region causing her this ridiculous uh, pain and circumferential uh, numbness. And then um, she has uh, lower extremity weakness with bowel and bladder dysfunction, saddle anesthesia. This is a neurologic emergency. Uh, the uh, most common uh, metastasis leading to uh, core compression or prostate, lung and breast cancer. And the metastasis usually begin in the posterior aspect of the vertebral uh, body with later invasion of the epidural space. And the most common early complaint is pain. Two thirds of the patients will have uh, motor deficits at the time of uh, the metastasis uh, diagnosis. Question 14. A 25 year old woman has lost vision in the right eye for six weeks uh, at age 18. The loss was attributed to, quote, nerves uh, when her father died. Her uh, visual acuity had been as bad as 20 over 400, but now it's 20 over 20 with 20 over 15 acuity uh, in the left eye. She's been having recurrent 20 to 30 minute episodes of dimming of vision related to exercise and hot showers and she has no other neurologic symptoms. Which of the following statements about this patient is or are true? A, she has a larger pupil on the right. B, she probably has a, a normal visual uh, evoked potential. C, she has a right afferent pupillary defect. D, she has definite multiple sclerosis. Or E, she has an optic nerve tumor. The answer is C. Uh, she would likely has a right afferent pupillary defect. So her initial presentation was consistent with an optic neuritis, which would be associated with an afferent pupillary de defect, meaning that she has poor visual acuity out of that eye so that, uh, that when you shine the flashlight back and forth, that there, there'd be a relative uh, uh, dilatation of, of that pupil. Um, so optic neuritis is the presenting uh, symptom of multiple sclerosis and up to uh, 50%. Um, and she also has Utah's phenomena. This is this episode uh, transit worsening of symptoms with increased body temperature, either due to exertion or in her uh, hot showers. And it occurs in, with isolated optic neuritis and in uh, patients who have had optic neuritis associated with multiple sclerosis. So six months later, she returns after having an episode of right leg weakness and numbness that resolved. MRI at that time shows an enhancing lesion of the left periventricular white matter. She begins treatment for MS, but develops fevers, chills, malaise, muscle aches, and uh, fatigue. Which is the following is the most likely treatment that was initiated? A, intravenous methylprednisolone. B, rituximab, C, a gut, uh, glutaminor acetate, D, interferon beta, or E, natazolam. The 
the answer is D. So uh, interferon beta. The uh, interferons frequently cause flu-like uh, symptoms, and this is a very common side effect uh, which requires intubation into uh, intervention. Uh, side effects can usually subside after uh, early treatment. They last about a day after injection and may subside over time. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and Tylenol uh, are often used to manage uh, the symptoms. Question 15. 60-year-old mechanic fractures his left tibia. Two weeks later, he develops severe constant aching in his leg. The leg becomes pale with some cyanotic modeling. He feels cold and uh, sweaty and movement is limited. Toenails are brittle and uh, short. So the most likely diagnosis is A, tarsal tunnel syndrome, B, occlusion of the uh, tibial artery, C, a uh, psychophysiologic disorder, D, complex regional pain syndrome, or E, a dermophyte uh, infection. The answer is D. Complex regional pain syndrome or reflex sympathetic dystrophy is a progressive disorder caused by severe pain, swelling, and changes in the skin. The cause of this disorder is not known. Precipitating factors are, include trauma and surgery, although there are some cases that have no uh, demonstrate uh, injury uh, originally. And in, it's characterized by presence of a uh, noxious event uh, causing some sort of immobilization or nerve injury, continued pain, allodynia, that is pain to, perception of pain to something that should not be painful, hyperalgesia, uh, um, and evidence at the, at the time of, sometime dur uh, during the course of edema, changes in uh, blood supply or abnormal pseudomotor activity in, in the area of the pain. And here's the picture showing the um, left leg have it be swollen with discoloration. All right, good luck. <laughs>